So what do we got going here, John? Well, just trying to make some room to bring that painting over here and work on it. So what are we doing here on this painting today? Well, I'm just gluing this little horse on and putting a ball in the yard. And then I think that's going to be the end of it. I think it's ready to go to Nelson to this woman that wants it. Can't seem to find them. Aha! So my lightweight question of the day while you're working on the painting there is how do we challenge each other's beliefs without shooting each other or even have a conversation? I guess, I, I, I guess working together might be some part of it trying to do things that that you can agree on and how do we even get to where we can agree on things when we might have such differing beliefs whereas today's method is more to just shoot people that disagree or have differing beliefs rather than going huh I never looked at it that way how do we even have the conversation? Yeah, we see that's out of style. That was that was in style in the 60s. Oh, I never thought about it that way. But that's long gone. As far as I can tell. I think I think if you can't say, look, I can get you 25 bucks an hour, people would rather not be bothered. And I think that's pretty sick but that's the I think that's I think that's what it's come to do you mean that the only reason people have to do anything or the only motivation they have is money now and that we all do things for money rather than doing things for art or be, or just for the sake well, of doing well if you start something. talking about love and friendship these days people tune out pretty quick that's what I see I I find that w we have a core of people and, and mostly I think older people whose belief system is around love and, and compassion and friendship but the the popular um, what, I, what I think I see the popular attitudes have to do with how how can how can what I do give how can what we how can we achieve more more privilege and more freedom and money is the it's the ticket to that it's it mind you what you get is pretty cold but that's what's in style like I believe that money is the is the going religion these days I think that uh, when when I when I was very young I think I think the church was religion, God was religion, and and uh, prayer and holiness somehow. And by the time I was through high school, 
1953, it was rapidly changing to education. And education was pretty much the religion of the North American or Western world. It was pretty, I think, pretty universally agreed that education was the it was the Zeiss guide of the time. It was the place to go. And instead of going to work like guys go to Fort McMurray or something now to get thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, and therefore render themselves able to buy property or or mostly I think they buy trucks and drugs and alcohol, but whatever they buy, they got a lot of money to do it. And the farthest thing those guys are interested in would be uh, education or, or religion. I, I, think, I think there remains a sort of a lip service to some kind of religion. And I think you need that to have ethics in your culture. But I think it's, stretched out pretty far and I think it's mostly about money. So is it a love of money or a love of things or a love of money to get the things and forgetting why the th why, what you're trying to get or what the things are for? Well, and confusing. Again, I'm cynical I suppose, but I don't think it's love. I think it's lust. I think I think there's a lustiness in our culture for these kinds of things. It's a confusing lust for love? Don't think it's, I don't even think, yeah, maybe, maybe. Well, I, mean, I, I just think they don't give a shit about anything, but. But you were talking about, you know, people talking about love in the 60s and somehow the paradigm shifting to more materialism. Well, I, I think we all thought we were, I think we all thought we were evolving toward a, a more religious being or a more spiritual being. And I think we were all kind of freaked out by the idea of religion because we'd had so much Catholicism and Protestantism stuffed up our coli that we got sick of it, right? And then there was all this Palestinian and Israel stuff and India and Pakistan and and Afghanistan and Iraq and see I grew up in the shadow of Korea and and uh, that that whole debauchle and what somebody said on the radio this morning about the US culture is that that we're a warring culture like whatever else we are uh, we're first confronted by the proposition that we're we're warriors. We're, we're it always gets bent around. So whomever we're doing war with is somehow or other bad. And these are you see the Second World War was a righteous war. It was it was right to to do in Hitler. But um, that's long gone. Well, it goes back to what I started with in terms of how do we have the conversation or how do we share anything or talk about anything when it comes down to battling beliefs and righteous beliefs, sir. Well, I think I think that I think there's something to do with the fact that you gotta want to do that. And I don't find that that's the the first desire. I don't think that's the first thing that people want to do. I don't think people want to do that. As much as they want to be groovy, they want to have tickets to whatever game or whatever privilege or whatever ski pass or whatever 
fantastic experience there is and there's this great pursuit of the of the fantastic and I'm not so sure that the fantastic is attainable and <coughs> I am less sure sure that you can buy it if it if it is attainable I don't, if we, if we could get our head straight I think there's some chance that we could obtain all sorts of comfort and achieve good living but I don't know if we're culturally bound to get our heads straight and, and maybe that's just my my uh, some of my anguish coming through I'm, I'm not sure what that is what do you think is important in life well you're, you've been around a while. You're peace, peace in your heart is extremely important, no matter what else is going down. Like if you don't have peace in your heart, then I don't know, man. Freedom, a little, a little bit of freedom goes a long way. I never realized how big a deal freedom was. But, you know, Rick, Ricky Havens, that guy that just died, had that song, Freedom, that was his biggest song. Uh -huh. And he was a black man who had achieved some freedom. And I, I suspect that's a pretty, pretty hard thing for a black man to achieve. Uh, well even maybe for any man to achieve. So what we have is we have a culture that attempts to achieve that by putting it up for sale. And I think we've created the, the haves and the have-nots and enhanced that greatly. And it always has been an issue, but now I think it's a bigger issue again. It's the stuff that countries are built on that gets kind of warped I think nationalism beliefs well nationalism pretty my country right dangerous around. stuff like I I think that uh, I don't know about nationalism man so you've been around the block a few times it's like you're Closer to the tail end of things, to the beginning of the things, and you know, what do you see? What would you like to? What would you like to achieve before you pass along out of here? Or what would you like to see happen? Well, I, I suppose I would like to find peace in in my soul, but I don't think that's attainable without other other people finding it too. I don't, I don't think you can get peace and, unless you're somehow or other putting peace out there. I was listening to, I think it was a CBC radio program yesterday about superpowers and what superpowers people would like to have if they could have one. And, you know, people were rattling off, you know, which they could fly or you know, big strength or all kinds of other things. And I found myself thinking, wow, what a cool superpower it would be if you could just like, you know, make people happier, you know, make them feel like loved or warm or something. Well, and that's what the Dalai Lama is all about, I think. He's giving people reassurance on levels that helps them find ways to find their own center. Or something like that. I used to know 
all those answers, Sierra. I think. I thought I did. I don't know if I know him anymore. Maybe you know them more now than you thought you did before. Well, that's the question, you see. So, caffeine was at 75 or 85? I guess so. See, you, you gotta have you gotta have enough of this evil money to keep on keeping on. So uh, Mel thought it might have been a mono print of the church that you had there. Oh, is that one gone? Well, we I don't see it, but I don't know if it was there. I don't know what was there. Well, there was one there. Uh huh. Well, if it was hanging on the back wall, it's gone. Yeah, I, I think it was. Mm -hmm. This is weird. How are you doing for money? You got enough? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting world we live in. Yeah. Oh, you're filming him. Are you filming? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, you just well have that. You, you, could, you could do something with 50 bucks, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It'd be great if you could lift your hat. It'd be nice if they'd tell us who bought the paintings and who, what ones they were, you know. Yeah. Well, there's just one, right? Yeah. My hat came down, eh? They do that. No, I'm not, no. Okay. Do you want it? I can work around it. Uh, maybe about 15 more minutes, Kathleen. Hello! Oh, we got, we found the big green egg for you guys. Oh, no, no, big no. green egg. Hello. You have to be happy. Now, 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 now. Talk about it. Wait, her. Oh, I don't know. You got here, Pat? How do you know? I think that's some artist named Alex. You might enjoy meeting him. So, I'm apologetic to say because of the impacts that life has dealt me, it's just been, um, I'm not as clear as I was. Like I'm, I'm jolted. What are you mumbling about? Holy shit! Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a, you look like a dignitary with your hair all like cut off. Like you look good, man. Let me interrupt you here. This, this is, this is Sierra. That's. Hi, Sierra. 
You're doing something important here with him, are you? My dog. Can he come out of the car? Yes. It's all the same as everything else. He'll get along with your dog just fine. Okay, great. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, really? You? Uh, well, you know, I think it, I think, I think, I think I'm doing all right. It looks like you're doing well. That's beautiful. Well, I almost recognize it. Uh, yeah. Hey, Alex Ford, where do you go? I think he went in the bathroom, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm just going to show him this picture. He brought us a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um. We've been pretty lucky with watermelons this week. Oh, there's a lot of watermelon. Yeah, everybody's bringing his water. Hi. Howdy. That's, what's, what's that can you brought up behind you? That's Garrett. That's this is uh, Garrett um, and this is Cannon. Is that one you did? Waterscape. No. No, I wish I could paint like that. Who did it? Jet Buchanan. Uh, who? Chet Buchanan. He was he was a hey. kind of a quiet drunk, eh? Yeah. Um excuse me. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Is he still around? I didn't realize that was happening. No, he died about two years ago. Related to Mount Duke Cannon at all? Well, he was a, an Easterner. He was from the Maritimes, and then he'd uh, come to California. And I guess he became fairly prolific in California as a painter, but then he, then he moved back to Canada, and he kind of gave it up. Painted a little bit but not as much as he was. He just, he just drank, basically. Well, that's, a, that's an option. I like a lot of good painters. Uh -huh. I, I've heard yes. of more than one guy's doing that. Well, so let's, let me see this thing. I'll lay it down. Is that wet down? So below? here's the damages over here, and there's a little bit there and there. And I mean, I got, I've had it up now. I even put, built a frame for it. Um, and I can live with it. It, you know, uh, it bothered me at first, and I thought I could fix it, but I don't have to. I think, have you have you tried? Uh... I haven't tried anything yet. I just wa okay. I washed it with warm water and dish soap. I think, um, other than that, there's a place where it scrubbed off there, you see, and you see yeah. that blue through there. Yeah. I could paint on it and... I would, but it's, it's going to show. I, I mean, I'm good. I'm good at that sort of thing, you know, at, at matching stuff. Yeah. But I, um, I just thought what I might do is just soften it up with a bit of uh, acetone or something like that, uh, uh, you know, uh, a solvent, and just drag it back into uh, across the scratch, right? Yeah, I, I, uh, I, the scratch almost isn't discernible, right? No, it isn't. And, and so, and, and at first I, I really scrutinized it, but then when I put it up on my uh, wall, I, uh, I realized that the painting is so good, you don't even see that stuff. I, I would, uh, I'll just touch it. See where it's broken right through. I'll put mm -hmm. some there. Mm -hmm. Is that acetone? No, that's paint. Oh, okay. What is this? This looks like watercolors, but they're not, are they? They're acrylic? Yeah, they're acrylic. Okay. Yeah. They're watercolors. Water based. Yeah. Yeah. My guess is because he put oil based varnish over a water based paint. And it, see it rolled oh, back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's that's what it, I that's what I think I see. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I stepped on a little dog. Yeah, yeah that little dog hangs pretty close sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sure, let me know. Yeah, it sort of crawled away from itself. Yeah, didn't it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It did let here, and that's just. That's just how how it is sometimes. A few days ago, about all this stuff, and he reckons that the toxicity of all this stuff 
It's pretty serious. Is it? Well, that's what he thinks. We were talking about it yesterday. Um, whoops. You get it? Yeah. I, I've probably been uh, subjecting myself to toxicity for 65 years at least. And How old are you now? Coming up pretty quick to 78. Okay. Oh, wow. And you've probably gotten all kinds of toxic stuff on the farm too. You can't get the good stuff like that anymore. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't believe we had all that much toxic stuff. Like, like, uh, it was pretty much stuff that came out of, out of the ground or out of the air or out of the, like we, we weren't into any of that artificial stuff that I, that I can recall. But it's not because we wouldn't have been, it's just because it, it cost too much. So what is that little button you're putting in there? That's a ball. Oh, okay. It's a little kid's ball. Right. See, I put this in and that in just to, uh, uh, I don't know, to, to make it more kid friendly. If they don't like, I'll take it out. But uh, that means I'll have to repaint the area. And I'd rather leave it in because I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But see what happened? This tree was over here and it went right out through the center of the house. Okay. So I moved it and by moving it, I made a big blank yard. And so then I, I started putting bushes in and trying to build a, a kind of an environment around the thing. Where is this house? Uh, 306 Silica. It's that great big house on the corner. It's, okay. You know, like the road is here. That's, uh, that's John, uh, pardon me, uh, uh, Robert and Penny. Um, oh, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's their house. Well, it was their house. Yeah, yeah. I think. But I remember they did a lot of work on that. Yeah, that might be two orders ago. Yeah, yeah. Caron. Yeah, and and, and yeah. then they came apart, right? Yeah. And the the house was their their biscuit, and I think they just about murdered each other over the house. Well, was that right? Well, of course, you know. Huh. So John, you talk about she was by then a real estate agent, right? Yeah. Yeah. So John, you said something about putting something on because you liked it, maybe taking it off because you know if somebody didn't like it. How much of being an artist is following your own muse and doing things because you like them and because you want to, and how much of it is doing it? for somebody else's vision. Well, my my theory is that the artist is the guy who determines what art is for the culture. And if you're good, but some guys get better than others, and if you're diligent, you can establish yourself a reputation that People will, I don't know, sometimes buy your art or, or uh, relate to your art. And so if they, if they, if and when they do that, that creates a kind of a, it gives, it gives you more, more latitude, right? But there's also a place where You try, you try to work and like this is a commission. So right away I, 
I, I painted it differently and I don't they didn't ask me to do that I, I just got caught up in it oh is this a, is this for the people that live in the house now no no this is some people that want to buy the house oh, okay okay is it for sale again I guess oh yeah yeah what happens if they don't buy it well I don't think they can buy it it's eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars so they're they're dreaming so this is as close to the ownership of the house as they'll yeah I think they might it's get. I think it's that kind of deal yeah yeah and I'm okay with that sure except I got hours and hours and hours and hours and hours into this thing what's your favorite part of the painting uh have any favorite part of the painting <laughs> I like the rock wall and the stairs quite a lot. And I, I kind of come to like the house, but basically I don't like the house. I love the house inside. Have oh, you been I, inside that yeah, house? Yeah, it's dark and bleak. I don't oh, like it. it's all original though. Yeah, but it's all dark, man. Oh, I thought it was quite nice. I, I mean, I've only been there for parties, right? Yeah. So quite a while ago. And uh, it, it just I did I did some work for them. Um, oh, you worked on the house? No, um, I, I I had the dip and strip business. The what? Oh, you did? You cleaned the furniture? Furniture finishing, yeah, yeah. Oh, was that you that did that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I knew that was going on, but... I did that for a few years. Yeah. But I hadn't met you at that time. No, I don't think so. But I knew there was such a business going on. Yeah. Is there any part of the painting process that you like more or less than others, John? Start to finish? Uh, mixing the paints, you know, I, I suppose that would have to do with what day it was and what the barometric pressure was and what you had for breakfast and how you were flow, flowing that day because it's always all different as, as the best as I understand it anyway. I seem to think that it's changing all the time. Would you call it a spiritual practice? Sometimes. And sometimes well, I it's think just dog leg work, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I find that whenever I, and it's not often, but whenever I get into something creative, it is a spiritual practice. It's, uh, you know, it's not me doing it. Well, it can be. Yeah. It's things that work out. Uh, in spite of me. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I painted as a kid, you know, when I was uh, locked up in my room, that was all I could do. Where'd you grow up? Toronto. But, uh, um, and then I never really got back into it. When I went to art school, I painted no more than I had to to pass a course, right? I was more interested in sculpting, but I, I, I like painting more so now, if I could ever discipline myself to get into it. Do you paint? No. I think we have yet. refreshments here, gentlemen. Enough painting. Oh. Oh, that's, oh, it's one of those yellow melons. Yeah. And okay. Forks if you need a fork and... Uh, there you go. No, you don't want that with I you. have a fork. But you're working, and you're gonna get that all over your. Well, of course he is. I'll just try one of these. Either like a popsicle. John, yeah, that's probably the answer. <laughs> we have a towel there if anybody gets a. The napkin with the white lips just seems classic. Is that good? Down there. Thank you, sir. I'll be. That's what I'm afraid it's about. Yeah, no, no, it is about that. You know, this. Uh... Well, they say what I'm hearing about the states is the Republicans are trying to squish Obama any way they can. Oh, they, they, yeah. I mean, he's not doing a great job, but it's not his own his fault. Well, I don't know whose fault it is. Well, I think it's the Republicans. They're leaning. Well, on they're going to kill him if they can, just because that's what their business is. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, like, like Sierra and I were talking yesterday, I'm not so sure about 
uh, what Obama stands for as much as I thought I was before. But when I think about Obama or Romney, I'm so glad it's Obama. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At least he's sincere. But those cook guys wanted to buy the, the wedding, and they're going to try that again in two years. You watch. By the wedding? Yeah. The election. Oh. Okay. That's a big wedding feast, I think. Yeah. Looks like it done. Same place in a different spirit.